Now broadcasting from beautiful downtown Tallahassee, it's Classic Movie Reviews with Snark. Welcome to today's show. My name is John. As always, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes or follow the links to social media in the podcast show notes. Today's movie is in the badassery genre and 60s and 70s youthful rebellions. So let's jump right into the first of three released Billy Jack movies, Born Losers 1967, Tom Laughlin, who played the role of Billy Jack, also co-wrote and directed and produced under another name. I would say he was invested. Tom Laughlin was born in Wisconsin in 1931. He played football in college and was later trained in Hapkido Karate. Laughlin's first movie role was a beaten football player on a plane with James Cagney in the Wilder years, 1956. He was a moderately successful actor, appearing in such films as South Pacific 1958 and Gidget 1959. He really made a mark when he started producing his own movies in the Billy Jack series. The character was introduced in The Born Losers 1967 and reappeared in Billy Jack 1971, The Trial of Billy Jack 1974, Billy Jack Goes to Washington 1977, and the never-released The Return of Billy Jack 1986. He also made a movie about cowboys and karate in The Master Gunfighter 1975. Billy Jack 1971 cost $800,000 to produce and made over $65 million. He also changed the way that movies were distributed. Elizabeth James played Vicki Barrington, the spoiled little rich girl that got into a mess and needed help. Elizabeth was only in three movies, The Born Losers 1967, which she helped write, Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry, 1974, and Love from a Stranger, 1958. Since leaving film, she has been writing nonfiction for youth, working the UCLA Extension Writers Program, and writing suspense novels under the pseudonym Beverly Hastings. Jeremy Slate was in the role of head bad guy Danny Carmody. I didn't expect much when I began researching Slate. Slate joined the Navy when he was 16, and was 18 when he found himself on a destroyer off Omaha Beach on D-Day, June 6, 1944. Slate made a vow to himself on that ship that if he lived, he would have an interesting life. While at college, he was class president, on the football team, and a radio personality. After college, he became a DJ and sportscaster. He was a public relations exec for six years, then moved his family to Peru. This is where he began acting in theater. After a year in Peru, he got a long role on Broadway. He was very popular in the Beach Boys set and was in over 20 movies. He was beaten up by Elvis in Girls, 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 1962. Frankie Avalon smashed a guitar on him in I'll Take Sweden, 1965. He was punched by Van Johnson in Wives and Lovers, 1963. Was shot by John Wayne in True Grit, 1969. Died trying to save the Duke in Sons of Kate Elder, 1965 was shot between the eyes by Billy Jack in The Born Losers, 1967, and went up in flames in The Lawnmower Man, 1992. Slate wrote the screenplay for Hell's Angels, 69, released in 1969. He was also a successful songwriter. Slate died in 2006 following surgery for esophageal cancer. William Wellman Jr. played gang member The Child. William was the son of World War I fighter pilot and ace director William A. Wellman. He was around Hollywood types all of his life and even took small parts in his father's films such as Lafayette Escadrille 1958 and Darby's Rangers 1958. He was able to find other work in lesser quality films like High School Confidential 1958 and College Confidential 1960. He was a favorite of actor-director Tom Laughlin and was in Like Father Like Son 1961 and The Born Losers 1967 and its sequel. He did a bit in the party movies such as A Swinging Affair, 1963, Winter A Go-Go, 1965, and A Swinging Summer, 1965. He also starred in all of the big television shows of the time. Later, he was present in a number of cult classics. In all, he had over 200 film and television appearances, plus stage and commercial work. Jack Starrett played the role of Deputy Fred. He beat a prisoner in the movie almost exactly as he would later beat Rambo in First Blood, 1982. Tourette was born in 1936 in the mighty metropolis of Refugio, Texas. His first film, Like Father, Like Son, 1961, was written and directed by Tom Laughlin. 
That was followed by another Laughlin project, The Born Losers, 1967. He then played a cop in Hell's Angels on Wheels, 1967. He was in two other biker films, Angels from Hell, 1968, and Nam's Angels, 1970, which he directed. Nam's Angels was the first of the Bring the Boys Back Safe film. This was copied in Uncommon Valor, 1983, the Missing in Action series, and the Rambo series. These movies are all in the genre of re-winning battles that we've lost. After directing a couple of so-so films in the 1970s, Storett bounced back with Jim Brown and exploitation films such as Cleopatra Jones, 1973. However, what is most important is that he played Gabby Johnson in Blazing Saddles, 1974, and reminded us all about authentic frontier gibberish. Bushwhacking, horn swoggling, crocker crocker, is gonna roll away. His biggest directorial success was the wonderfully bad, devil worship, car chasing, horror film Race with the Devil, 1975. Sturrett also worked the big television shows of the time. Sadly, he died in 1989 at the age of 52 from kidney failure. Robert Cleves played Mr. Crawford. I wouldn't mention him, except he was convicted of second-degree murder after running over a man twice with his car in a road rage incident. Robert Tessier was gang member Q-Ball, although this is the only movie I've seen where he didn't have his head shaved. Tessier was reviewed in Episode 17, Hard Times, 1975. Jeff Cooper played gang member Gang Green. A pretty boy, he is not known for much, except ruining the Circle of Iron 1978 and a part that was written for Steve McQueen and would have had Bruce Lee instead of David Carradine. Susan Foster was a local that Tom Laughlin used in The Born Losers 1967 and Billy Jack 1971. She was also in The Boy Who Cried Werewolf 1973. Jane Russell played the small role of Mrs. Shorn, the mother of one of the rape victims. Russell was born in Minnesota in 1921. Russell was interested in drama early on and joined in high school plays. After high school, Russell worked as a receptionist and modeled on the side. When she saved up enough money, she went to drama school and was eventually spotted by Howard Hughes. In 1941, she was cast in The Outlaw, 1943. However, the film wasn't widely circulated until 1946 because of censorship related to how much cleavage was showing from Mrs. Russell's ample bosoms. When The Outlaw 1943 was widely released, it was a big hit. Russell signed a seven-year contract with Hughes, but he only wanted to use her in movies where she was scantily clad. Most of her earlier work, like Young Widow, 1946, His Kind of Woman, 1951, and The Las Vegas Story, 1952, did little to show her acting talent. Perhaps the high point of her career was in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, 1953, with Marilyn Monroe. Russell held her own in this comedy. She was given, and I'll have to use an industry term here, crappy movie roles for the remainder of the 1950s. After another flop in 1957, Russell worked a little in television before she returned to film for Fate is the Hunter, 1964. After that, she couldn't find any roles and only made four films in the 1960s, including The Born Losers, 1967. Russell's last film was Darker Than Amber, 1970. During the rest of the 1970s, she was a spokesperson for Playtex Bras, ending her career the way she started it, showing her breast. Russell died at the age of 89 in 2011. Teresa Kelly is Laughlin's daughter and acted in the four released Billy Jack films and the unreleased one. She was also in Breaking, 1984. Dolores Taylor was Lawton's wife until he died. She was in the four released and one unreleased Billy Jack movies. Story This movie begins with Dolores Taylor telling that Billy Jack, Tom Laughlin, is a ranger green beret, back from the war, horsebreaker, and part Indian. He lives alone in the woods. He had just returned from the war, one of those green beret rangers. A trained killer, people were to say later. Before the war, he had hunted down and broken wild horses in these mountains. Some said the reason he was so good at these things, and the reason he lived alone in this forest, was that he had some Indian blood in him. Others said he simply didn't like people. All I knew was his name, Billy Jack. Billy Jack drives his trademark Jeep into the seaside town of Big Rock. At a red light, a young asshole in a Volkswagen Beetle 
starts eye-raping the biker chicks on the back of the motorcycles in the next lane. The biker gang is the born losers, and they have the regular Christ, Nazis, and nude girl iconography. The VW driver is not paying attention and rolls his car into the back of one of the bikes. The driver of the bike, Danny, Jeremy Slade, is pretty cool, all things considered. He tells the asshole that there is no harm and there won't be any trouble. Then the asshole tells the biker that the trouble would be his. Danny is then told that the guy was eyeing the girls. You, uh, bumped into my bike, son. I'm sorry about that. Well, no harm done. You were lucky. You're the one who's lucky, man. He's eyeing the sheep, Daniel. Maybe he wants a little candy. So the gang pulls the asshole out of the car and proceeds to beat him to within an inch of his life. The asshole runs away and the gang slowly follows. Local car drivers roll up their windows and look away. He tries to go into a diner where Billy Jack is enjoying a cool drink. At first the owner won't let him in. Billy Jack insists and helps the asshole call the police. As all this is happening, there is a family watching it from across the street. This is Lawton's family, Teresa Kelly and Dolores Taylor. The gang comes and gets the kid out of the diner. Billy Jack steps in to keep it from turning into a murder. Billy Jack uses his trusty M1 and shoots one round into the hand of a gang member that has a broken bottle. About this time, the police show up and arrest the gang and Billy Jack. In the courtroom, Billy Jack is lectured for taking the law into his own hands and given a heavy fine of $1,000 for using the weapon. We allowed citizens to take the law into their own hands. Our streets would become jungles, armed jungles. I hereby sentence Mr. Jack to 120 days in the county jail or to the payment of a fine of $1,000 plus costs. You can take your choice. The gang members are fined $150 each for assault. The scene switches to some northern college where rich girl Vicky is going on vacation with her father at Big Sur. When she gets to the airport, she gets a message that her father is not coming. She gets all butt hurt and goes on vacation by herself. Back in Big Rock, the born losers are racing up and down the streets while young girls in bikinis watch. Danny hears that his younger brother is being beaten by their father. He asks the younger brother to come with him. The father spits in Danny's face. Danny wipes it off and then licks his finger before the brothers drive away. Back on the main street, Billy Jack's Jeep is parked by a bar. Gang member Cuball, Robert Tessier, puts a sign on it that says, No Indians Allowed. This is ironic because Tessier is a real Indian. Hey, Kimosabi. Didn't they teach you how to read in squash school? Danny comes back and it seems that he and Billy Jack have a history. Billy Jack wants to leave with no trouble. One of the gang members cut his tire. They give him ten minutes to clear out and he does. Vicky rides her motorcycle into town wearing an all-white bikini. Deputy Fred goes into the bar and recovers some stolen property. He calls Danny a faggot and challenges him to a fight in the jail. I'll tell you what, faggot. You come down to the jail to visit me sometime. Alone. We'll lock ourselves in a cell together and see who comes out with a key. After a swim, Vicky sees a dead seal, which I assume is a metaphor for the biker gang. The biker gang starts a race and four town girls follow in a car. After the race, the gang sees Vicky and they chase her down. She makes it to a gas station restroom and is safe for the moment. When she calls the police, they are too busy to help. The gang changes the road sign and traps Vicky on a dead-end road. She rams her motorcycle into gang members speechless. Danny's woman gives her advice to play along. She goes back to the gang house. It switches back to Billy Jack trying to get a loan extended, but the banker won't help. He agrees to sell the Jeep to Mr. Crawford, Robert Cleves. Vicky goes into the club and it's the scene of debauchery. Vicky finds out she has to have sex with all of the members of the gang. About this time, some of the four town girls that followed the race run out of the back room as they have been raped. Vicky bluffs them out, saying she has acid and amphetamines on her bike. Who's got the acid? Acid? Oh, come on. If you kids are gonna sail, we're not coming out of orbit for three days. I'll be the best damn mama this club ever had. We're all tapped out. Sorry. Nice try. Except I just happen to have some on my bike. And some amphetamines, too, unless you're afraid to mix the two. Oh, what a bunch of 
bunch of finky bad guys. You really are afraid. The gang is afraid to try the drugs, but she teases them into agreeing. She goes out to the bike with Krabs and Hazel. Krabs secretly turns the gas off on her bike, and Vicky knocks him out with a crowbar. Hazel lets her escape. When she runs out of gas, Speechless and Danny's brother Jerry run her down and rape her. Again, the locals won't help. Six of the bikers are arrested for the rape of the young girls and Vicky. The bikers hatch a plan to intimidate the witnesses. Mrs. Schroen, Jane Russell, is the mother of one of the girls. The mother has to go to work, and the girl starts practicing stripping. The bikers sneak into the house and scare the hell out of her. When the police and DA come, Mrs. Schroen says her daughter will not testify. Vicky is in the hospital, and the DA tries to convince her to testify. Mr. Crawford comes and buys Billy Jack's Jeep. Crawford's daughter is one of the rape victims, and she is still in shock, unable to speak. The DA puts Vicky in a hotel room for protection with Deputy Fred, Jack Sturette, watching over her. The deputy leaves his post and goes to the diner, and the gang steals his car. He fires at them and grabs a civilian car to chase, forgetting his mission. Billy Jack is watching the whole thing happen from the diner. The gang grabs Vicky, but she breaks away and runs to Billy Jack as he comes out of the diner. This is the first time in the movie where Billy Jack uses karate. Using her motorcycle, Billy Jack takes Vicky to his place in the woods where she will be safe. Crawford brings the money and Vicky says she is not going to testify. Billy doesn't judge. He hides the money in his trailer. Danny visits his brother in jail and tells him he will make everything all right. Jerry breaks down because he is new to gang life. Billy and Vicky go to a restaurant and they meet a strange man that gives them an astrological reading. Get, uh, get all your things in order. Taxes, insurance, your will. Get rid of her. <laughs> what? What did you say? Get rid of her. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Two cardinal fixed signs. Uh, great power, but they don't go well together. You're in for a black period. Back at the jail, Deputy Fred hits Danny with a billy club just like he did to Rambo in the 1980s. The astrologer calls Vicky and Billy Jack nice kids, but says the stars are against them. The gang goes to Billy Jack's trailer looking for Vicky. They find Billy's money and steal it. When Billy Jack finds out that his trailer has been robbed, he takes Vicky into the hills where she'll be safe alone. When she goes to sleep, Billy Jack goes down to the bar and demands his money back. Danny tells him that gangrene took the money. Danny drops a cigar between their arms, but Billy Jack ignores the pain. Billy says he wants the money by tomorrow. The next day, Billy Jack and Vicky are at a gas station when the whole gang shows up. Since gangrene is the toughest, and he has Billy's money, he decides to fight Billy Jack. My money, Daniel. You want it bad enough to take it off me, stud? If I have to. Okay, stud. I've been wanting to crack at you from the beginning. Are you planning on fighting or uh, talking to me to death? Billy Jack handles him quickly and then pumps gas on him and holds a lighter over him. Billy takes one of the club's strikes until he gets his money. The gang goes to the Crawford girl's home, kidnaps the girl, and takes her back to the clubhouse. In the morning, the gang finds Vicky and Billy Jack and force them to go to the clubhouse. Danny calls Mr. Crawford to come by and Billy and Vicky come in. Mr. Crawford shows up with a gun, but the gang takes it away from him. Billy makes a plan. He tells Vicky to run when the fighting starts. You think you can get away with those Green Beret heroics in here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact. I do. Vicky runs out, and they knock Billy Jack out with a crowbar. The gang beats Billy Jack and catches Vicky before she can get far. Vicky agrees that she will do anything if they let Billy Jack go free. Vicky gets him to free Mr. Crawford and the girl as well, but Mr. Crawford agrees that his daughter will not testify. As soon as the hostages are gone, Vicky backs out of her deal and the gang beats her to a pulp. The cowardly sheriff refuses to arrest the gang without backup. The last girl, Linda, Susan Foster, admits that she's been a willing partner and she hates her mother more than the gang. I said I won't go through with it. Poor Linda. Of course she loves you, Davis. I promise you. I can't go through with it. I wasn't raped. What was I doing? I said I wasn't raped. I wanted them to do it. 
I'd even been there before that night. She even says she's been back at the club since the rape. When Billy Jack finds out that Vicky's at the clubhouse, he leaves the hospital, daring the police to come with him and saying that the town deserves what it gets. He goes to the clubhouse and sets Danny's bike on fire. When the gang runs outside, Billy Jack sneaks into the club. He has his rifle in hand. He finds Vicky nude and beaten on the floor. He covers her with a coat. Billy Jack points the gun at Danny and says the gang will have to take Vicky to the hospital and have the doctor call to say she is safe. He gives Danny to the count of three. On three, he shoots Danny between the eyes, busting his white girl glasses. Billy then tells Child he is in charge and starts to count again. And if I don't... I shoot you, right between the eyes. And I shoot another one of you every minute that that phone doesn't ring starting 15 minutes after she leaves here. That mother's flipped out, Daniel. One. He means it, Daniel. Two. I'm gonna gut your bowels out. Three. Child. Huh? Okay. You're in charge. What? We'll get her! Child immediately sends Vicky to the hospital. Billy Jack sends everyone outside but Child. The local police have surrounded the clubhouse. Billy tries to escape out the back and he's shot by Deputy Fred, who thinks he's a biker. Later, they find the near dead Billy Jack by a lake. Vicky says she loves Billy. A helicopter comes and flies him away to a hospital. World famous short summary. Two star-crossed lovers struggle to find peace. If you enjoyed this week's show, please tell your friends, and if you really want to help, drop over to iTunes and give me a review. If you want to comment, recommend a movie, or just say hi, follow the links in the show note to my site. Beware the Moors.